Hi, and welcome back. Today, we're going to have a look at the functions of the happy nerding three times Mia. Mixing, attenuating, inverting, and offset generation. More importantly, we're going to have a look at why these basic functions are so important and share some patch tips along the way. I'll quickly explain how the three times Mia works, and then we'll have a look at each of its four functions in detail. This is the three times Mia. And the easiest way to understand this module is by looking at it as three independent mixers. Each mixer has a horizontal row of jacks with two inputs and one sum output. Because this module uses dual potentiometers, each input has its own bipolar control lamp. The inner one for the first jack and the outside ring for the second. The module is DC coupled, which means you can use it for audio as well as control voltage. When you plug a jack in one of the inputs and feed it a signal, the corresponding knob becomes a bipolar attenuator, or as some say, an attenuverter. At the full clockwise position, the signal is passed through completely. Moving the knob towards 12 o'clock attenuates the signal until it's completely closed. And passing on counterclockwise starts to invert the signal until it reaches its input strength again, but inverted. Additionally, when no jack is inserted in an input, that part becomes an offset generator. By turning the knob clockwise, you can create a constant positive voltage up to 5V, and counterclockwise creates negative voltages up to minus 5V. If you don't use either of the jacks, both become offset generators, and since they are mixed, you can create up to plus or minus 10V at the sum output. Finally, these switches give you the possibility to add the output of one mixer to the sum of the next, creating a 4 or even 6 channel mixer. And that's it. Mixing, attenuating, inverting, and offset generating. So, why are these so important? If you ever studied some basic SYN structure diagrams, you've seen a mixer section pop up. The most common function for a mixer in a synth is to mix different oscillators and noise sources together, before they go to a filter, for example, for further sound shaping. Most Eurorack oscillators and filters don't have their own mixers built in though, so you need a separate mixer module to combine different audio sources. In fact, if you really enjoy mixing different sound sources together for a single voice, it's worth it to look at a dedicated audio mixer, perhaps one with a nice saturation or overdrive. But having a couple of extra mixers in your system will really give you more creative routing flexibility. Besides using a mixer in a main synth voice, I use them to combine the main and sub output of an oscillator before going to a filter, mix two percussive elements before they go to an effects module, combine two detuned oscillators before feeding them to a wave folder, or mix two background samples like field recordings with different lengths before they go to a VCA to shape the volume. However, the power of having extra mixers is even bigger when it comes to mixing CV. Many modules only offer one CV input for certain parameters. So in order to make more complex modulation, you have to mix them. And you can literally mix any signal together to create more complex modulation. Here are a few ideas to get you started. Take a filter for example. A common thing to do is feed it an envelope, but I like to mix it with a slow LFO for some dynamics over time. I even like adding a third modulation by mixing in a separate waveform output of your main oscillator that can really add nice textures to your sound. Mixing two modulation sources together can create lovely results as well. Take a tempo synced and a slow free running LFO for example. Or try creating new envelope shapes by mixing two ADSRs with different settings and polarity. You can mix a regular envelope to the filter of your synth voice with a quick one, triggered by a sequencer for example, to add clicky percussive elements to your basic synth patch. I really enjoy combining the output of a sequencer with an LFO or smooth random voltage before sending them to something like a filter, sample player or even a quantizer in order to generate melodies. You can also use a mixer as a trigger combiner. For example, to combine a steady trigger from a clock divider or a sequencer with a sporadic random trigger before sending it to a drum module. Finally, I like to stretch it having two or more sources pre-patched via a mixer to a single destination is a great way to create lively performance patches. Even if you don't use the mixed signal all of the time. For example, you might have a regular envelope to a certain parameter at the beginning of your track, then halfway through the performance, 
mix in a steady fast triggered envelope to create a rhythmic drive and for the outro mix out the other two sources and mix in a slow droney random voltage. Like this. With mixers you can create graceful transitions without repatching, and that makes them very powerful performance tools, both for audio and CV. I'm going to make this one short. Attenuating is the act of weakening a signal before it reaches a destination. In the modular this is crucial. Modules like oscillators, envelope generators and LFOs all generate signals at their maximum capacity. But most of the time, you only want a very subtle version of that signal to influence a certain parameter. And to do that, you need an attenuator. And quite a bunch, perhaps. Because a lot of manufacturers choose to not put attenuators on all their CV inputs. Some famous ones I have are the Clouds, Passimilis Iteritas Alta, and Dixie 2. And it makes sense because you probably don't use all of these parameters at the same time anyway. And with extra parts, the modules would be bigger and more expensive. But it does mean that you have to supply them yourself. I counted in the current setup you see here. And there are over 30 CV inputs without their own attenuators, but could benefit from it. So to cover that, I currently have 13 independent attenuators available. That's even without the six VCAs here, who could also be used as attenuators. I'm not going to give you any patch tips on this one because you can literally take any output to any input and see if it benefits from attenuation. And the answer is probably yes. Inverting signals can be fun, but it's probably not the first function you're thinking of when you're starting with the modular. With an inverter, you can flip the polarity of any signal. Let's take a regular ADSR envelope, for example. Many envelope generators only offer positive signals but inverting those can give you entirely new shapes to experiment with before feeding them to something like a filter or a wave folder. If you have a kick drum and a bass line, for example, you can send an inverted envelope to a VCA to dock the volume of that sound, for example when the kick hits, to create a crude sidechain compressor. You can also use the inverted output of an envelope follower for this. If you mold a source, like a synth voice, the two half-opened VCAs, you can create a stereo panning effect by melting an envelope or LFO, sending the original to one of the VCAs and an inverted copy to the other. This way, if one signal opens, the other closes and the other way around. This is also a great way to have something like an LFO crossfade one modulation source between two destinations. Attenuverters, like the ones on the 3 times Mia, combine attenuating with the possibility to smoothly go into inverting a signal and that adds extra performance power to it. If you have an envelope going to a filter, it really changes the character if you sweep from a positive effect to a negative one. Or if you have a slow tempo synced LFO to a clearly audible parameter like a filter, it's a great effect to sweep between positive and inverted signal to shift the accent in time. Offset voltage is a constant positive or negative voltage that you can inject into your patches. Again, if you're just starting out with modular, this is probably not the first thing you're after, but especially if your system grows, it offers some nice tricks. Here are a few of them. You can use offset to create manual control of a parameter that has none. For example, the pulse width control on my Dixie 2. Or I can use it to open one of the low pass gates on the Make Noise LXD. You can also use an offset voltage to raise or lower entire signals. I like to be able to mix a sequence with some offset before sending it to a quantizer, so I can raise or lower the pitch of the entire sequence during a performance. Like this.
You can also use this trick to bring a signal into a specific voltage range when needed. For example, I like using the 4MS stereo triggered sampler, but it's a digital module and only reacts to signals between 0 and plus 5 volt. Now, if I send it a regular sine wave LFO, the entire negative part will have no effect, and the top of the positive part will be too strong to have any effect. By attenuating the signal and then mixing it with some offset, I can bring the entire sine wave LFO into the 0 to 5 volt range, and it will nicely sweep between samples, for example. This also works to invert gate signals. Mold a regular gate signal, invert it, then mix it with offset to bring it back into the positive voltage range again. Now you have an inverted copy. Attenuating or inverting and at the same time mixing the result with an offset voltage gives you a lot of control over your signal. And it's very often these little details that make a modulation sound great. If you want to help me make more videos like this, have a look at my Patreon, where it's possible to read more about my plans and support me with a small donation on a monthly basis. But that's it for now. I hope this video gave you some tips or new ideas. In any case, thanks for watching and see you next time.